In the extremely vast and immeasurably large universe of Star Wars, the Sith have always embodied the epitome of villainy. These dark side practitioners, renowned for their power and insidious plots, have bewitched fans. While names like Darth Vader and Darth Sidious have become synonymous with evil, the Sith Order isn't just limited to its male members. The Sith have also bred a cadre of formidable female characters who have left an indelible mark on the Star Wars mythos. Beyond their fierce combat skills and manipulative tactics, many of these Sith ladies possess an undeniable charm, and you cannot help but be attracted and drawn to them. In this video, we'll explore the top 17 gorgeous dark Sith ladies who were so violent and berserk they'd chop your head off if you cheated on them. So, without further ado, let's begin, shall we? Before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Darth Lumia Darth Lumia, also known as Shira Bree, had fair skin, green eyes in the shape of almonds, and shoulder-length red hair. She often wore a Rebel Alliance flight suit, which earned her popularity amongst her fellow rebels. But the reason why she's on this list is the interactions and relations she shared with Luke Skywalker. Following a severe injury during a battle, Lumia began to harbor a deep hatred for Luke Skywalker, whom she blamed for her misfortune. Her injuries necessitated extensive cybernetic enhancements, including prosthetic limbs, a torso, a lower jaw, and a life support girdle. Initially, she wore body armor and a helmet resembling Darth Vader's, but subsequent upgrades improved her appearance, emphasizing her human features and enhancing her physical capabilities. During the Second Galactic Civil War, Lumia appeared as a middle-aged woman with graying hair. She often concealed her face with a scarf, but occasionally revealed her disfigurement. Despite her use of force illusions and makeup, Lumia accepted her appearance and believed it served her purposes. Lumia maintained various false identities throughout her life, including Shira Bree, a Shalivane refugee, a Kuwati mercantile princess, Sylphinia L, a dark-skinned smuggler, and Brisha Sayo of Commoner. She sometimes disguised herself as a beautiful Hapan noblewoman. Her true identity was Lumia, the self-styled Dark Lady of the Sith, with different individuals referring to her as a Dark Jedi, Sith Apprentice, Sith Lady, or the Dark Lady. Darth Talon. Although she was a Lethan Twi'lek, she later went on to become the Dark Lady of Darth Krait's One Sith. Talon bore Black Sith tattoos earned through ritual combat, and these were inscribed by Darth Krait himself. The tattoos covered her entire body, including her head and leku. Talon began her Sith training under the tutelage of another Twi'lek Sith Lord named Darth Ruin. However, she later executed Darth Ruin with a lightsaber on Krait's orders, which marked her transition to a full-fledged Sith within Krait's order. Due to her unwavering loyalty, Darth Krait designated Talon as one of his two hands, marking her an instrument of his will. In this role, she collaborated with her hand counterpart, Darth Nil, on crucial missions, including the pursuit of Jedi fugitive Cade Skywalker. She attempted to persuade Skywalker to join the One Sith. To achieve this, she used various tactics, including seduction and a physical relationship. Talon also contributed to Skywalker's training in the ways of the dark side, although he ultimately rejected the One Sith and wounded her with his father's lightsaber. Throughout her service, Talon remained devoted to Darth Krait, even during Darth Wirelock's attempted takeover of the One Sith. Following Darth Krait's eventual demise during the Battle of Coruscant, Talon went into hiding with the remaining One Sith members. I am able to serve. If we enter battle, I will fight and die alongside you. Visas Mar. Mar, a Mira Luka, was known for her unwavering commitment to her chosen path, exemplified by her dedication to aiding Mitra Surik in confronting her former master. However, the devastation of witnessing her homeworld's destruction through the Force left Mar deeply traumatized, which compromised her foresight ability. Darth Nihilus exploited this vulnerability, manipulating her psyche until she became utterly subservient and devoid of hope, losing her sense of self and vitality. Mar's eventual liberation from Nihilus's influence occurred when she was defeated by Surik, which served as a catalyst for breaking the hold Nihilus had over her. She confessed to Surik that the very fact her former master could be eluded gave her hope for his defeat. During the search for the Jedi Masters, 
Mar reconnected with life, attributing this transformation to Surik and pledged to protect her. While she retained traces of her servile demeanor, her journey with Surik helped her regain confidence and self-respect. This transformation ultimately severed the final bond to her former master, allowing her to rediscover her true self. Mar, like all the Miraluka, was born with physical blindness, relying on foresight to perceive the physical world, including the ability to see through barriers. She had a highly developed sense of the Force, demonstrated by her ability to sense Surik's presence across the galaxy during her apprenticeship with Darth Nihilus. Her profound Force sensitivity enabled her to perform telekinesis or the Jedi's object movement power. Additionally, she may have practiced Farsight, allowing her to foresee events such as the inevitable confrontation between her first and final masters. Asajj Ventress As a child, Ventress was kind and caring, but underwent a significant transformation after the death of her master, Kai Narek. Her grief led her to embrace the darkness, and she developed a strong determination to survive. Ventress struggled with inner conflicts, hearing Narek's voice urging her away from the dark side, but ultimately rejecting it upon learning of his actions. Her anger was quick to surface, especially when her lightsaber skills were belittled, yet she possessed cunning and swiftness that allowed her to outsmart many opponents. Vindictive and inconsiderate at times, Ventress sought revenge against her former master, Count Dooku, and treated Savage Opress poorly, leading to his rebellion against her. During her time as a bounty hunter, Ventress showed a softer side, showing mercy to certain individuals and rescuing Obi-Wan Kenobi and Ahsoka Tano. She distanced herself from her past as a Sith and embraced a unique yellow-bladed lightsaber as a symbol of her independence. Ventress formed a romantic relationship with Quinlan Vos and ultimately sacrificed herself to save him, redeeming herself and returning to the light side of the Force. Darth Malady Darth Malady was a Sith who received extensive training from birth in the new Sith Order. She was proficient in wielding a lightsaber and displayed commendable agility in combat. During duels, Malady combined her lightsaber skills with force attacks making her a force to reckon with. This was evident in her confrontation with the Twi'lek Jedi named Shadow Vow on Had Abaddon, where she engaged in a lightsaber duel and used force lightning to attack Shadow Vow. Malady specialized in torture and assassination techniques. She effectively extracted information about Cade Skywalker from Jedi Master Hosk Trailis using specialized torture droids. She possessed exceptional skills in espionage, assassination, and interrogation, with expertise in Sith alchemy and Yuzon Vong bioengineering. She was also proficient with the memory walk technique, which she used against Cade Skywalker on Wayland. Her mastery of the Force included proficiency in Force Lightning, which she used to torment Jiraiya Sin and Delilah Blue while interrogating Cade Skywalker. Malady also excelled in Sith Alchemy, using it in combination with her knowledge of Vong Sense to manipulate Yuzong Vong Coral Seeds, causing painful and fatal sores in sentient beings. She played a role in sabotaging the Aussis Project, leading to the Sith Imperial War, and created Omega Red an enhanced version of the deadly Alpha Red. Darth Malady wielded a red-bladed lightsaber, a standard among Sith, and typically wore all-black attire. Darth Xana. Once upon a time, Darth Bane, a Sith Lord, implemented the Rule of Two in the Sith Order, which stipulated that there could only be two Siths at any given time. One would be a master who embodied power, and the other, an apprentice who sought it. Bane chose an apprentice named Darth Xana and imparted his arcane knowledge onto her. Remarkably enough, Xana remained concealed from the Jedi Order. After Bane's eventual defeat, she continued the Rule of Two which enabled the Sith to persist in secrecy while the Jedi incorrectly believed the Sith had plunged into extinction. Although historical records didn't accurately document Bane's apprentice or the circumstances of Bane's demise, it was conventionally believed that Bane died in a confrontation with Xana in the Inner Rim world of Ambria, which was a pattern repeated by many Sith thereafter. And it was actually quite possible because the concept of two Siths meant that the apprentice would seek their master's power. For instance, Darth Sidious rose to power by killing his master, Darth Darth Plagueis a thousand years after Bane's death, and chronicled the ordeal in his book titled The Secrets of the Sith. Sidious acknowledged Bane as a significant Sith Lord and the founder of a lineage that culminated in his own rule over the Galactic Empire. Sidious also credited Bane and his apprentice for establishing the Rule of Two, which ensured the Sith Order's survival as Sith apprentices rose to power by slaying their masters, starting with Bane's own demise at the hands of his pupil. However, it must be noted that not all Sith apprentices succeeded in supplanting their masters. Darth Nyrus, a powerful Sith pureblood 
won some really notable conquests and a seat on the Dark Council in the Sith Empire. However, internal strife and assassination attempts prompted her temporary seclusion on Kaas City's outskirts. She hired Lord Scourge to investigate her enemies, but she had her own secret agenda. Nyrus's appearance deteriorated due to dark side rituals, which she flaunted as a testament to her power. She was part of a Dark Council conspiracy to overthrow the Sith Emperor. Scourge uncovered Nyrus's treachery, leading to her disclosure of the Emperor's secrets. Nyrus captured Revan and held him captive. Ultimately, Scourge turned against her and revealed her betrayal to the Sith Emperor who took swift action, resulting in the seizure of Nyrus' stronghold. During the final battle, Nyrus headed towards Revan's prison cell. Along the way, she encountered the droid T3M4, whom she sent tumbling down the stairs with a powerful blast of energy. Nyrus then dispatched two guards with a burst of purple lightning, reducing them to charred husks. Upon reaching Revan's cell, Nyrus found him accompanied by the Jedi Mitra Surik and Lord Scourge. She questioned Scourge's motives, but when he remained silent, she realized his betrayal and attacked both him and the Jedi simultaneously. Nyrus unleashed a powerful storm of dark side energy, but Revan absorbed and redirected it back at her. In her own moment of death, Nyrus was consumed by her power and ultimately reduced to ashes. Exal Kresh. Exal Kresh initially held a deep sense of importance and superiority when she became the Emperor's apprentice. She believed that her Sith heritage entitled her to be the Emperor's heir. However, her perception changed when the Emperor attempted to subjugate her as his slave rather than his heir, leading to her feelings of betrayal. Her resentment towards the Emperor grew, and she became willing to provide crucial Imperial information to the Jedi and the Republic to undermine the Empire's efforts in the Great Galactic War. Despite leaving the Emperor's side, she struggled with his persistent mental taunts and commands, which began to drive her to madness. Despite her internal torment, Exal Kresh felt a sense of invincibility due to the strength the Emperor had instilled in her. She believed she could defeat any agent sent by the Dark Council to apprehend her. Unfortunately, her arrogance and superiority complex caused her to underestimate her enemies, ultimately leading to her demise at the hands of Teneb Kel. In terms of her abilities, Exal Crash, a member of the Crash bloodline, possessed strong force sensitivity and received training in the dark side from Vitiate. She also had extraordinary martial combat skills. Darth Lacris. Darth Lacris was a skilled fighter in the dark side of the Force who served as an apprentice to Darth Mar during the Great Galactic War between the Sith Empire and the Galactic Republic. She eventually earned the title of Darth and rose to become a Sith Lord. Later, Lacris participated in the Sith Empire's invasion of Coruscant the Republic's capital. After the Treaty of Coruscant, she took on Laric Ceres as her first apprentice. During this time, Darth Lacris and her apprentice led Imperial forces on the planet Balmora, which was under the jurisdiction of the Dark Council. She assumed command by executing her predecessor and became the local leader. Many Balmorans formed a resistance against her Imperial forces. Many years later, Lacris personally visited Balmora's Sundari flatland, which housed the advanced Imperial command base. She learned that Grand Marshal Chiquetta had sent Jedi reinforcements to aid the resistance. Lacris tasked an Imperial strike team with disabling the barricades at the Balmoran Arms Factory, and she also asked the strike team to uncover evidence of Republic involvement. After successfully infiltrating the factory and defeating Jedi Raylon Nyes and his companions, Lacris directed the Imperials to meet with the Grand Marshal. The Imperial strike team then dealt with the remaining resistance, ultimately leading to Darth Lacris gaining control of Balmora. The scent of your Darth Phobos Darth Phobos was a female Thelan Sith Lord from the planet Korriban, but she lived thousands of years prior to the Clone Wars. Known for her cunning and manipulation, she eliminated several fellow Sith in her pursuit of power. In response, the remaining Sith turned against her, attempting to end her life. However, Phobos survived this assassination attempt and formed a devoted cult of followers who worshipped her. She used this cult to launch attacks on both Sith and Jedi, earning her the moniker, the Hidden Fear, among the Sith. Phobos had distinct physical traits, including green skin, blue hair, and yellow eyes. She excelled in manipulating others and didn't hesitate to resort to violence when necessary a trait that led to her isolation from other Sith. Following her actual demise, rumors circulated for centuries about Darth Phobos' 
Ahsoka's continued existence, contributing to her becoming the subject of ghost stories told to Jedi Padawans. In a simulation encounter with Starkiller, a Sith apprentice, Phobos sought to exploit his fears and used her mental powers to create confusion. She identified Starkiller's deepest fear as the loss of Captain Eclipse, indicating that she was the only person he truly feared. Vestara Kai Vestara Kai had light brown hair, dark brown eyes, and fair skin, typical physical features of a Sith in the Lost Tribe. However, she bore a small scar on her lip, which, in the tribe's culture where beauty held high value, was considered a flaw. Olaris Rhea, though, saw the scar as an asset, giving Vestara a constant smirk-like appearance. Despite the scar, Vestara was considered beautiful by other humans, including Ben Skywalker. Her father taught her to channel her emotions as weapons to achieve her goals. She felt deep compassion for her Uvok named Tick, though she suppressed her emotions when Rhea considered killing the creature. Vestara also cared deeply for her family, understanding her father's choice to marry her mother out of love, despite her lack of Force sensitivity. In her youth, Vestara Vestara trained with the Kashiri Ari Ross, with whom she developed a close friendship. Ross developed romantic feelings for her, but she regarded him as a friend and didn't reciprocate his affections. Later, she recognized her inferiority to Luke Skywalker and fled after Rhea's death. On Dathomir, Vestara recognized the Night Sisters' power and arranged a meeting with her tribe, intending for them to capture the Night Sisters. She cleverly used her time on Dathomir to buy her tribe time to prepare and hide her true intentions from the Skywalker. In their company, she refrained from revealing information, although she did flirt with Ben Skywalker, which developed into mutual attraction. At her father's behest, she used this attraction to gather information from the Jedi. Sarai. Sarai, a Chagrian female, was born to Darth Wirelock, the third Sith Lord of the Wirelock lineage during the Sith Imperial War era. Raised on Korriban, she received training in the ways of the One Sith Order by Darth Krayt, who also served as the Emperor of the Galactic Empire at the time. Her father, Darth Wirelock, secretly incapacitated Darth Krayt and tasked Sarai with guarding Krayt's tomb within Zozan's temple as he prepared it. When Darth Strife, recently revived, demanded access to the tomb, Sarai initially denied him entry. Their confrontation escalated to physical combat, with Sarai using her Force abilities to overpower Strife. However, Darth Wirelock intervened and ordered Sarai to cease her assault, preventing Strife's death. She returned to her duty, allowing Strife access to the stasis room for a discussion regarding Krayt's condition. At a later point, Sarai relocated to Coruscant. She stood by her father's side when Darth Krayt, now resurrected, asserted his presence and will through the dark side of the Force. Sarai displayed a close bond with her father. Throughout these events, she remained loyal to the One Sith Order and, following Krayt's demise, continued to serve the New Order under Darth Nil. Her Sith name, Sarai, meant truth in the Sith language. Tahiri Vela as a child, Tahiri Vela had an optimistic and free-spirited nature. Raised among the Tusken Raiders of Tatooine, she had a fascination with the Force and her own connection to it. Vela's keen attention to detail allowed her to recall specific facts about Banthas and their usefulness in desert transportation. However, despite her fondness for Tatooine and her upbringing, Vela had some animosity towards Tusken Raider traditions particularly their requirement to cover their bodies and faces. She developed a phobia of footwear due to her early years on the hot, sand-covered surface of Tatooine and preferred going barefoot in most situations. During her initiation into the Jedi Order, Vela formed a close friendship with Anakin Solo, and they remained best friends throughout their adolescence. Vela often provided comfort to Solo, assuring him that he wouldn't follow in the dark footsteps of his Sith Lord namesake, Darth Vader. The death of Anakin Solo during the war had a profound impact on Vela. She mourned his loss for years, regretting not sharing her feelings with him before his death. This tragedy, coupled with her experiences during the war, led Vela to become more withdrawn, sullen, and pragmatic. She lost her youthful idealism and struggled with depression, never fully recovering from the loss of her closest friend. In fact, Tahiri Vela's fall to the dark side of the Force was primarily driven by her deep attachment to the late Anakin Solo. She became Darth Kydus's apprentice, the first active Dark Lord of the Sith since Darth Sidious, due to her emotional vulnerability. Initially intended as a spy in the Jedi Order, her failure to corrupt Ben Skywalker led to her selection as Kydus's apprentice. Darth Atroxa. Darth Atroxa was a Lethan Twi'lek female Sith Lady during the era of the Eternal Empire. She played a significant role in defending Korriban, but was ultimately killed by Prince Arkham. Some people might get her confused with Darth Talon, another Lethan Twi'lek Sith, and they may have differing opinions about their respective physical appearances, which is, of course, a subjective matter. Oh, we're not crazy. <laughs>
We've just embraced the power of the dark side. Maris Brood. Maris Brood initially lived in seclusion with her master on the remote planet of Felucia as the Galactic Empire expanded its rule. She had a strong desire to confront the Empire but was restrained by her master, Shock T. Brood tended to give in to her primal emotions and darker impulses, although her master believed it was primarily driven by fear as opposed to anger. Upon Shock T's death and feeling abandoned on Felucia, Maris Brood succumbed to the dark side of the Force. She attributed her descent to the planet's dark nature but her fear of Darth Vader led her to prioritize her own survival above all else. She was willing to take hostages and potentially bargain with the Empire to save herself. In a confrontation with Starkiller, Mara's brood pleaded for her life out of fear, which Starkiller saw as a weakness. He believed her inability to control her fear transformed her from an aspiring Jedi Knight into a coward who begged for mercy. Despite her claims to renounce the dark side, doubts remained about her sincerity. Mara's brood had Force sensitivity and received training from her initial master and later Shaw Tea. Her training comprised the use of the Force and Jedi principles. Additionally, she used a Force cloak to hide from Starkiller and launch surprise attacks. Alima Kido. Alima Kido, hailing from the aristocracy of Empress Teta, had a penchant for seeking excitement beyond the confines of high society. Her interest in Sith magic led her to journey to Onderon with her cousin, where she hoped to uncover the secrets of the Sith. Unfortunately, she underestimated the corrupting influence of the dark side. As a Sith sorceress, Alima was of cruel and volatile temperament. She frequently subjected her subordinates to harsh punishments and used her powers to intimidate and terrorize those around her. Deception and manipulation were her preferred tactics for achieving her goals, often relying on her charm and wiles to seduce individuals like Ulla Keldroma, whom she later manipulated into murdering her cousin. Alima's cunning and conniving nature was further evident in her portrayal of Keldroma from the Jedi only for her to resume her deceptive romantic involvement upon his return. Her duplicity ultimately led to her downfall, as she underestimated the extent of her enemy's deceptions. In terms of her abilities, Alima exhibited a strong connection to the Force even before becoming a Sith Witch. She possessed precognitive abilities, often having vague insights into future events. Her Force sense allowed her to perceive strong dark side energies, such as those emanating from Ondera, and the dark side presences of individuals like Keldroma and Exar, Coup. Additionally, Alima had the ability to manipulate technology and weaponry with her sorcery, often turning them into grotesque forms or using them against her enemies. <laughs> Marvelous Verdict Sith ladies have emerged as some of the most intriguing and beloved characters in the Star Wars universe, not solely for their appearance, but for the depth of their stories. It's evident that compelling backstories play a pivotal role in capturing the hearts of fans, regardless of gender. The character development of women like Xana, Cognus, and Malady has resonated with both male and female audiences alike. What sets these characters apart is the richness of their stories, their journeys from different backgrounds, their struggles with the temptations of the dark side, and their complex relationships with other characters have all contributed to their appeal. That's it for today, but if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and may the Force be with you.